Out of the 34 defenders in Rainbow Six Siege, Thorn is by far the best roamer in the entire game right now, hands down. To show you why, in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a full-length operator guide to better show you how to play Thorn so you can unlock her full potential. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Now, the first thing I'm going to go over is Thorn's loadout. Now, as you can see, she has two pretty good primary options. The M870 shotgun is actually a pretty good shotgun. The range on this thing is insane. The reload time does kind of suck, but the damage makes you able to one-shot most attackers. But we go over to her Uzi. Now, her Uzi is by far one of the best SMGs in the entire defending lineup not only this it has very low recoil it hits like a truck with its damage and it has a 1.5 time scope which is by far the best scope in the entire game you put a flash hider on this bad boy or even a suppressor if you can control the recoil and this gun becomes an absolute monster the only downside of this gun is that it has 22 bullets but if you know how to manage recoil effectively you can get around this issue with ease going over her secondary weapon options she has the c75 and the 1911 tac ops you always want to run the machine pistol it's better to have a secondary smg than a pistol in every single scenario where an operator has a secondary SMG, so just trust me on this one. And then Thorn either has a deployable shield or barbed wire. Now, normally in most circumstances, you always want to run a deployable shield over barbed wire every single time. But with Thorn, the barbed wire actually pairs really well with her gadget, so there can be an excuse made to run the barbed wire instead. But still, nine times out of ten, you're going to run the deployable shield with her loadout. And then finally, we obviously have her primary ability, the Razor Bloom Shell. I'm going to bring you into a custom game to better show you how to use this ability effectively. So I brought you onto Oregon, one of Thorn's arguments best maps. So I'm going to teach you how to use her gadget properly. You don't want to be throwing her gadget on random doorways like this or that or like right here because all they're going to do is they're going to walk in the proximity of the mine, wait for it to activate. Once it activates, they're going to leave, wait for it to explode, and then walk in. So the gadget is pretty much useless. What you want to do instead is you want to put it in areas where if they hop in, they can't really hop back out safely. So a great option would be like lower attic here because most of the time if an attacker drops attic right here and a thorn trap goes off they're exposed to so many angles especially if they try to hop back up an attic that it's honestly safer for them to just run away from the thorn trap which allows you to use the information to swing and get a free kill putting it right there would honestly be better because if they're going to run this way you want them to still have to be inside of the thorn trap and maybe get some free damage off either way it doesn't really matter you just want to put thorn traps in places where if they hop in they're not going to be able to hop back out safely this big window being a great example when most people hop in this big window it's all or nothing i do this with ying all the time if they hop in they're exposed to the feet hole the head holes here, the swing here, the swing from top white, people in dorms, people playing below on vert. So they're just exposed to so much, and if they hop back out, they're going to re-expose themselves to that danger. So it's better to just put a thorn trap somewhere like right here, where you can just make sure that they take at least a little bit of damage from that trap, while also giving you an audible sound cue that they've hopped in the window. The second way you can use thorn traps is paired up with something else. So sometimes I'll put a thorn trap on top white, because then it gives me an audio call that someone's coming up here. An audio call mixed with barbed wire allows you to know hey they're really trying to rush this site and the barbed wire here would slow them down allowing you to get at least a little bit of damage with this thorn trap a good example of another audio call would be the thorn trap right here this allows you to know if anybody has walked into trophy from this door or from this door and if you're playing inside of attic you can pretty much get free info and then swing off of the info with this thorn trap. So using thorn traps for info is the second way that I recommend you use her gadget. Now for the final tip, I posted this on my TikTok a while ago, so you might already know about it. Link is in the description if you want to follow that. But pairing it up by putting it in a floor with barbed wire is a great strategy. So let's say that they're pushing in master and they have to go inside of the closet to be able to get the wall open. They can't necessarily just walk out of closet whenever the thorn trap activates because then they'll be re-exposed to the angle like I talked about with my first tip. So putting a thorn trap here is a great idea, but if they're in the this room that means they're safe and they're safe to look around and just shoot the thorn trap so it's not going to be as effective what you can do is you can put a thorn trap in the soft floor like this Because her SMG is a 50 cal SMG, essentially making it an automatic deagle. By the way, yes, deagles can chamber 50 round bullets. You can throw thorn traps in here in wooden surfaces with ease. And this is a lot more hidden. If they're looking around for a thorn trap because it's been activated, they're going to look up, they're going to look in corners, they're going to look around, but they're not going to look right here. If you pair this up with barbed wire by putting your crosshair on the thorn trap when you place it down, the two black rings of the barbed wire will cover most of the thorn trap. Not only will it cover it, making it more hidden, but it also slows down the attack making it more likely that they'll die to the trap in the floorboard like right here you can do this with numerous examples people like to push up white a lot so what i'll do is i'll put one right here put it in the floor put barbed wire and put your crosshair right on your thorn trap and now it's completely covered by the two black rings 
and they have to spend a lot of time pushing up here. And they can't necessarily break the barbed wire because then they'll be exposed to two angles. So most of the times, they'll just run in through the barbed wire and they'll probably activate the thorn trap, giving you an audio call and maybe even some free damage in the process. The one thing that's a tad bit hit or miss when it comes to thorn is the fact that her ability has a delay to it. But you can use this to your advantage if you're smart. The way you want to be using this is if people are planting. If they come in and they try to rush right here for a plant, maybe they have a teammate covering here or a smoke grenade on the double door, they're going to immediately plant. But if a thorn trap activates only when they're planting because of the delay, they're going to be forced to stop planting, repeak all of these angles, and leave, which is very powerful to somebody who's trying to swing off of the information that this thorn trap provides. Now, in order for this to work, the thorn trap has to be pretty hidden, and it can't be shot by anybody that's trying to cover them. So you have to think about the angle the attackers are going to take. If their teammate's planting right here, then they're most likely going to have an angle right here looking at the shelves. So you don't want to put the thorn trap in the shelves. Instead, you want to put it in a corner like this, or maybe on the light bulb, just like this. Either way, these are pretty hard for anybody that's inside of the box covering their teammate to see unless they're right here. But if they're right here, they're exposed to the bomb angle here and the angle of the double door. So they most likely won't be able to destroy these thorn traps. That being said, you just have to think about it like that. Can the attacker see the thorn trap? Will the planter be able to run out of its radius? If no, then it's probably a good thorn trap. Now that I've gone over all of the tips and tricks I can with thorn, I'm going to give you a general playstyle marker of how you should actually play thorn in game to better help you play her and get more wins with thorn. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, thorn is a roamer, but is that necessarily true in all circumstances? The answer to that question is actually no. If you're a good thorn player, what you'll do is you'll lurk near site. If you don't know what lurking is, it's essentially the middle between anchoring and roaming. It's not necessarily on site, but it's not necessarily across the map roaming. You're just kind of playing near site so that you can rotate back if your team needs it. Thorn shines at this. She's not a three armor, so she's not meant to anchor, and she's not a three speed, so she's not necessarily meant to roam. She does have a 1.5 time scope, which is good for holding angles and getting kills, but if you look at her utility, it will differentiate her playstyle into being more of a lurker than a roamer. Her gun has a low rate of fire, but high damage. This means that she excels at holding angles and not necessarily swinging people, meaning that she isn't necessarily suited to roam as much as you would think. Also, she brings a deployable shield, and the solo queue environment, you can't necessarily expect your teammates to play off of the deployable shield properly. So you having a 1.5 time scope on a good gun can allow you to do this a lot easier and get some free kills along the way. If playing off of her shield wasn't enough of a reason to be an anchor though, her actual primary ability is definitely enough that you need to anchor with her. Most of the time your thorn traps are going to be on site. This means that you need to be playing on site to play off of the information that is provided by these thorn traps. If you look at the Oregon example that I just gave you, I put all of my thorn traps in or near site so that I, as the thorn player, could play off of it. I'm not sitting in small tower, I'm not sitting in big tower, I'm not roaming in the basement, I'm playing on or near site. That's what you need to be doing with thorn, and that's honestly a common misconception that most players have is because she has a 1.5 times scope and a good gun, she's immediately a roamer. This isn't necessarily the case, so you should start playing her more near site, on her deployable shield, on her thorn traps to get the most effectiveness out of her. This being said, if she's meant to be a lurker and not necessarily a roamer, does that mean that she is a fragger? Not necessarily. Like many of you know, there are three roles in Rainbow Six Siege. There are supports, fraggers, and flex players. Those are the three main ones. There are a few subcategories that we could go into, but for most players, you just want to be sticking to those three roles. Thorn isn't an anchor, like we said, because her utility allows her to be able to do much more. She has a good 1.5 time scope, so she can roam if needed but she's not necessarily a fragger because she's not meant to roam. She's meant to be kind of near sight. So that would put her in the flex category. I personally do believe that Thorn is a flex operator. You're meant to play as an anchor if your team needs it by playing off of the shield and the Thorn traps if you're down in man count, but you're meant to play on the roam if your team also needs it and get kills with her 1.5 time scope and her good gun. So it all depends on what your team needs. And that is the mark of a good flex operator is just flexing to what your team currently needs at any given moment in the entire round. So you wanna be playing her as such, getting aggressive when your team needs aggression and playing passive when your team doesn't need to be aggressive and they just need to waste time. Thorn excels at being a flex operator that lurks near the objective. So if you like having the flexibility of being able to play however you want, wherever you want, Thorn is definitely the operator for you. And finally, the last part of the video, I'm gonna be going over should you play Thorn. Now, if you have good aim and you like roaming, I definitely recommend Thorn for you. I think she's better than Warden in terms of utility. There are certain operators like Mozzie that can do better than Thorn, but I think for right now, the fact that she brings a shield is enough to bring her over most of the other 1.5 roamers. So if you have good aim, definitely yes, I recommend you bring Thorn. But if your aim is kind of okay, or if your aim is terrible, 
I don't recommend Thorn at all. Not only because you shouldn't be roaming or lurking off site with people if you have bad aim, but also she has a very low rate of fire weapon, meaning that if your first shot accuracy is very bad, you're not going to do well with Thorn because the next bullet that comes after the first is a lot slower, meaning you have a lot less of a chance to hit the head the second time around than you would the first time around. Now, if your first shot accuracy is pretty bad, you want to run high rate of fire weapons instead, like Warden or like Ash. If you notice that you're bad at Thorn, but you're good at the other two previously mentioned options, Operators, it is because of that reason. You need to have very precise first shot accuracy to be able to play Thorn effectively because of the lower rate of fire of her weapon. So if you like playing more support, maybe you don't have the best aim, but you like utility a lot, I don't recommend playing Thorn at all. But like I said, if you're a fragger with good aim, Thorn might be for you. With that out of the way, that is it for the complete Thorn guide. Check out this video where I go over the best Valkyrie cameras for every single map, and that's it for the entire video. Later.